Whistles echoed across the floor of the bar, piercing through the bass that shook your core. You sat by the wayside, away from the bar, yet you hung like a wallflower on a lonely table, leaning your elbows against its sticky surface with a half-empty tall drink. Those whistles continued to catch your ear, turning your eye towards a couple of drunkards that, to your dismay, caught your gaze. Their weak smiles guffawed at the sight of you from the dance floor, clumsily stepping through the crowd to roughly crash into your table. Their haughty laughter smelling of dry and stale beer. Hey there, gorgeous. One of them slurred with drunkenness. Why don't you join us and have fun? Continued the other his hands reaching out to yours before you pulled away as subtly as possible. Thanks, but I'm fine. You replied calmly, nursing your tall drink away from their fingers. Ah, oh, but you look bored, cooed the first drunk, his head leaning in across the table to close the distance. We can help take your mind off of what's bothering you. I appreciate the gesture, but no thanks. You persisted. The sight of both men revolted you while you leaned away from their presence. This kind of bar wasn't your typical getaway. You preferred the quiet of a warm establishment, idle chatter with bartenders and the serenity of one's company. However, having lost your job and being made redundant due to some conspiracy matters with the higher-ups gave you the impulse to do something... well... impulsive. The nature of this club was something out of your comfort zone. It wasn't the mood, or the music, or even the bartenders themselves who displayed a bit more flair than your typical local getaway. It was the nature of the patrons. Suddenly, one of the men grabbed a hold of your elbow, coaxing you to join them with a tight squeeze. We could go somewhere else. We know a place you might enjoy some... privacy. You froze in place, attempting to pull against his hold. His fingers dug into your skin, forcefully trapping you by the table like a vice grip despite his drunken state. Great. First, you lost your job. Now you're being harassed. Nothing worse could come out of tonight when all you wanted was to just wallow. There you are, Pepper, spoke a deep yet cheerful voice from behind you. There was this looming force that crept up your spine before you spotted an arm lean against the wall beside you. Sorry I'm late. I got caught up with work. The voice spoke close to your ear, still wondering who this was before the irate expressions of the drunkard stared past you. Hey, we saw them first. One yelled while his hand still gripped your elbow across the table. Really? Questioned the voice, leaning his arm across the way to grab hold of the man's hand. You felt his body press into your back, stiffening in place before you saw his hand pull the drunkards away from you. The excruciating cry from the drunk yelled through the loud music, spotting his entire arm tremble intensely for a moment. He pulled away, gripping his shoulder while he still shook. His drunk friend followed suit, grabbing a hold of him and feeling the tremors that still surged through his body. Let's go! He hissed, walking away with a more drunken sway in his step. You witnessed them disappear into the crowd, yet still eyed the expanse of people unsure whether they were truly gone. <sighs> Drunks, sighed the voice before you turned to finally see who your saviour was. Don't mind them. 
There standing before you was a tall man with dark hair that messily sat atop his head, coloured by the bright strobing lights of the bar. He smiled smugly at you, still standing close to your stool where you sat, encompassing the space between you with his arm still leaning by the wall. You could smell the alcohol on him, but he seemed a little more in control than the two drunkards he scared off. I'm sorry, do we know each other? You asked. Oh, well, not yet, he admitted. Great, another drunk. But I've been looking for you, at least someone with your talents. He continued, still hovering over you. Do you know how hard it is to find decent help these days? You sat in confusion while you gazed upon his charming smile. Despite the alcohol in his breath, he looked in control of his faculties. Staring at him only stirred this nagging feeling in the back of your mind where you had seen him before, as if you had a glimpse of his likeness somewhere in a magazine or on television. What do you mean by talents? You questioned, taking the bait from his vague explanation. Well, I heard your agency, the one you used to work for, shut down not too long ago. Am I right? He started with a smirk, seizing your heart. I'll take that expression as a yes. Anyway, I've been headhunting for some time, and now that you're on my radar, you fit the bill for what I'm searching for. You leaned away from him with the tiny advances he made, finding his arms trapping you within. Your eyes glanced back at the dance floor, eyeing the rest of the patrons who were oblivious to your situation. They strayed until they noticed those previous drunkards nursing themselves by the bar that scented the establishment. Don't look at them interrupted the man, bringing your straying attention back towards his voice. Why are you looking at them? His eyes lowered, hovering over you now pressed against the table. A playful smirk crossed his lips, his breath heavy while it washed over you with every word he spoke. Look at me. His face neared yours, feeling the warmth radiate from his body and his breath. He was drunk to an extent, but those dark eyes spoke volumes. Unlike the drunkards who were open about their intentions, this man's words reflected in his eyes, inspecting you and your reactions. Those eyes. Are you... Grand? You slowly asked, watching his intensity relax a little. <laughs> Took you this long to recognize me? Or my quirk earlier? He asked with a grin. No, it was your eyes. You admitted, catching him off guard. I'm not familiar with all pro heroes in the circuit, but I can't forget those eyes. I saw you in an interview once, but your eyes spoke differently to what you were saying. It was... captivating. The music still thumped against the establishment floors and walls before the man grinned wider at your observation. Well, I sure can pick him, huh? He remarked. You are the perfect candidate. Huh? I'm beating around the bush, so I'll cut to the chase. I'm in need of a PA, someone who is observant, quick on their feet, and can run with me on my conduct. You've just proven you can do that for me. <laughs> he laughed haughtily at his own observation while you stared at him, incredulous of this sudden offer. Are you offering? I have a job that needs filling. He interrupted. You in or out? Uh, uh, yeah. 
you exclaimed in surprise, wondering if this was a prank, a joke, or a scheme. Hours after you've been let go, someone, a pro hero no less, waltzes up to you and offers you a job. You wanted to pinch yourself somehow, do something to wake from this dream you surely must be having. Either way, I won't take no for an answer, he concluded. That gives me no choice, you tried to clarify. Great, then it's settled. You work for me now. What? You fretted on your seat, pushing back into the table before his arm held you in place. The sudden jolt caught you off guard while your body pressed into his chest. Despite the clothes he wore, you felt how solid he was. Those muscles he gladly displayed in public weren't all for show. Um, you can let go of me, you suggested, only to be met by a small chuckle beside your ear. No can do. We don't want those guys coming back now, do we? He reminded you, your body succumbing to the situation at hand. Besides, I think it'll be fun to work with you, Pepper. Um, what's with the nickname? You questioned. Well, gotta keep up with the charade now that those two idiots heard me call you that. I think it'll be cute. Hmm... You hummed grumpily against his chest while you felt his hands press gently into the crook of your back. You wondered if he was indulging a little too much in this embrace. But then again, you felt the same. Feeling his warmth through how tender and gentle he held you despite his reputation. Oh, and by the way, you start next week. He informed, finding you stiffen in his arms. I need someone ASAP. Can I trust you with that? This wasn't how a traditional employment would operate. There were no papers or contracts, just a verbal agreement. More so this pro hero making those plans for you. However, wallowing from the loss of your job to find a new one, what else did you have to lose? As soon as I sign something in writing, I am up for it. You proclaimed. Yo Shindo smiled at your terms. He felt elated to find someone competent, but also to track you down, and in the nick of time as well. He had been drinking at the bar after a long day, but felt his luck turn the tide to find that you were present at one of his favorite places to unwind. He pulled you away from him, smiling happily at you while his face still held close to yours. Of course. Protocol and all. He stated. Care for another drink before I escort you back to yours? You eyed Shindo suspiciously. But after this serendipitous meeting, who were you to question a gift horse in the mouth? Sure. Thank you, Grand. Please. Just call me Shindo. He reassured you with another grin. We're going to be great together, Pepper. Thank you for tuning in to another fan fiction reading. If you enjoy what I do or would just prefer to fall asleep to my voice, Please hit that like button, ring that bell, and subscribe to my channel. It has been a while since I've written anything relative to 7 minutes in heaven slash 7 minutes in hell. If I last recall the last word, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, but this was actually a request from someone who reached out to me on Wattpad, so I would like to thank Levi Yeager 1 for requesting a Yoshindo 7 Minutes in Heaven uh, scenario, I would say. Thank you all for visiting. I hope to hear from you soon. Next we meet.